Hello, learners. So it's a pleasure you are uh, all well. I am your instructor, CPA Aringo for Frederick. And uh, today's segment basically uh, it is about uh, the revisions. I remember, like, uh, we've uh, started our revisions, and uh, of course, we do have uh, these uh, tutorials which we've done for revisions already recorded. So in our class today, of course, we are looking at uh, financial uh, management. And financial management, of course, we have our two block model papers. The first block model paper, of course, uh, we've done all the questions which are now available. This is our first block model paper, which in this case, uh, it is very good. It will help you, of course, to understand the whole concept of financial management because it has been designed in a way that uh, it has uh, covered uh, almost uh, every concept in financial management. So we have our uh, five questions handling different, of course, uh, areas. So this is a block uh, revision, of course, for December sitting, which these are block revision model paper one. We have block uh, revision model paper two, which uh, we've covered uh, again almost everything in financial management. So in our segment uh, today of our revisions, remember we've handled all these questions. We've handled all these questions which are available on our video. So today's segment, I just want us to look at, uh, of course, uh, question number five, part A. This is what, of course, uh, I want to guide you guys. So uh, these are what you're supposed to do in this question number five. This is what you're supposed to do in this question number five. Uh, welcome to this segment of ours. It is a continuation of what you're doing earlier on in financial management. And uh, remember, we are in our block revisions. So in the last class, uh, we had uh, looked at uh, question number four. And question number four, we realized that uh, it was uh, covering uh, two areas. That is uh, financial forecasting and analysis. And uh, of course, the other key area that uh, it was covering, it was all about, of course, the working capital management. In today's session, we are looking at uh, question number 5A. And question number 5A, this is covering the concept of capital budgeting decisions. Remember, Molimo took us through, uh, of course, the whole concept of capital budgeting decision. And the question that I want us to do, this is a question here. We won't go back to the basics, but you're just going to handle these questions directly. Because remember, we have the videos for the basics, right? So uh, this question of ours, a good examiner told us that uh, Light Limited undertook a project uh, X with the following uh, cash flows over its useful life of three years. The cost of a capital for project is 10%. The abandoned values of the project have been given below. So you're having the cash flows here, zero that is of course initial outlay, one, two, three. So uh, that is what you're given. Required the good examiner ask us here to advise the management of Life Limited when to abandon the project X. So remember, my good students, it is a fact that uh, we can always tend to undertake yes, a project, but it reaches a point where we see, like, uh, at this point, it won't give us whatever that we're expecting. So we just decide that, uh, you know what, we want to abandon this project even before the project completion probably uh, date. So you'll find that uh, on uh, the process of abandoning, in this case, there's that amount that you can always recover on abandoning this project before its completion. So the amount that you are, the amount that you can recover before uh, completion of this project is what now we are referring to it as what as abandonment uh, of course uh, value. So at this point in uh, advising the management, then you find that uh, any time you are dealing with capital budgeting decision, remember we are looking at our course investment in capital items, and in this case of course we will always be having techniques which we talked about and discounted techniques. And also, we talked about discounted techniques. So at any given point, whenever I'm in a situation where we need to uh, advise on the abandonment, then the best approach will always be the net present value. The best approach to use will always be the net present value. If I can take you back in time, uh, remember, any time you're talking about the net present value, the whole idea here is that uh, we normally tend to look at uh, the present value of our cash inflows present value of our cash inflows, we less our initial outlay. This is what will always give us what? Our NPV. Uh, that is a very important to always note. So in the process of abandoning a project, you know that I'll be having two forms of cash flow. First 
of all, the first cash flow is whichever that you normally generate or whichever that you're going to generate from the project. Then the other item that you'll be talking about is the recovery value. If the vendor have decided to abandon this project at a particular time, this recovery value and also time it as well, we're also going to read as a cash inflow. So in this context of ours, in our question here, my good students, we can clearly see that you're given, of course, uh, this project with an initial outlay of 9.6. So the initial outlay of this project, we had the uh, initial outlay. Of course, uh, our good examiner has given us 9.6. This was our initial outlay. We're given a value of 9.6. Of course, our values are in thousands, right? So you told that uh, I'm having cash flows year one, year two, and year three. So let us consider if at all we want to take this project for the whole lifetime. The whole lifetime of this project is three years. What will we be able to generate? So the first step that I want us to do, my good students, is to determine the MPV or for three years. MPV, this is for three years. What will you be having? That is for the whole lifetime of this project. So my MPV in this context, of course, you're going to talk over MPV, therefore will be cash flow in year one, I'm having 4,000. We need to multiply by the present value interest factor, remember? And in this case, we are looking at what? In our context, we are considering the concept of uh, Assuming that is a, that is the value that you're having, that is of course uh, 4,000 in uh, year one. So our case, we can clearly see that uh, we are dealing with our cash flows, which are uh, literally, uh, these are cash flows that are in this context, we are talking about cash flows that uh, are they regular or irregular. You can see we are dealing with, uh, of course, uh, regular cash flows. We are dealing with a regular cash flow, right? So if at all we are dealing with regular cash flow, the question is, do you know how to determine that? Recall when we are talking about, uh, of course, regular and irregular cash flows. So for irregular cash flows, this is the same as what? Lump sum. This is the same as lump sum. For irregular cash flows, we are talking about lump sum. So therefore, in this case, the easy way that you can do, we determine our present value interest factor. So you need to determine our present value interest factor, not annuity, but given our rate, which the rate you are given 10%. So I'll be having, of course, 10%. I need to determine for year one, present value interest factor, 10%, year two, and present value interest factor, 10% year three. We need to determine, of course, these discount factors. So in this case, we are going to talk about year one. My factor, of course, would be, uh, in this case, we take, of course, uh, that is a uh, one plus one, a uh, one plus R raised to negative N. In the first context, I'll be having 1.1 1 .1 raised to negative N, which is negative one, which will give us 0 0.0, 0 0.90, 0 0.9091. The other item I'll be having 1.1 .1 raised to negative 2, which in this case I'll be having, of course, 0 0.82, 0 0.8264. Mm -hmm. We'll also be talking about a 1.1 .1 raised to negative 3, which in this case I'll be having, of course. 0 0.7513, at least it for the small places, right? Just like Molimu, of course, guided us. So therefore, in this case, we say that uh, our net present value therefore should be having year one cash flow that you're given, 4,000. So we're going to talk of 4,000 times 0 0.9091. Year two, the cash flow given, we can clearly see we have a value of 3750. So that's 750 uh, by the factor 0 0.86, uh, 0 0.8264. We're having uh, year three, 3,500. 
3,500. We're having, of course, our factor, which is uh, 0 0.8264. Right? So having that case, what will we be having then as our present value? Then after determining our present value, we need to deduct what? We need to deduct our initial outlay, which was 9.6. So therefore, my NPV in this context, what will we be having? Because remember, as at the end of year three, if at all you can check in that question, we didn't have the aspect of abandonment value. So that's why we don't have it there. So therefore, at this point, I should be having then 4,000 times 0 0.9091. We add that 750 times 0 0.8264. We add uh, 3,500 by 0. Point, uh, so in this case, where we determine the two, we needed to determine this should be 0 0.75.3, right? Check this one out here three. Kindly help me to correct that. 0 0.7513 as per what you have determined there, right? So we're having 4000 by 0 0.9091. We have, of course, uh, 3750 by 0 0.8264. We have uh, 3500 by 0 0.7513. Uh, of course, present value to give us 93, 64.95, then less, 9,600. So you can see we having a net present value of negative 235.05. So of course, you can't abandon in year 3. You can't abandon in year 3 because you check that I'm having what? I'm having that value, I'm having negative, I'm having a negative NPV. Which in that case, negative NPV, in that case, you'd find that that is a, a loss generating project. So we check at, uh, because we're having these values now, allow me to erase, or uh, maybe you can just have them here. Year one, we're having a factor of 0 0.901. And in one, year two, we're having a factor of 0 0.8264. Year three, I'm having a factor of 0 0.7513. So we proceed to, uh, of course, the next uh, test. The next test, what if we abandon this project, NPV, maybe at year two, two years? If we decide to abandon this project in year two, what would be our net present value? So in the present value, if at all you decide to abandon this in year two, what will we be having? We check our cash flow. First of all, I'm going to generate my cash flow in year one, which uh, will be the 4,000 by a factor 0 0.9091. We're also going to generate cash flow in year two, that's 750 by 0.8264. Uh, but I am abandoning it in year two. So therefore, we add the abandonment value. The abandonment value in year two, we have 3,800. So I'll be having 3,800. This is year two, so 0 0.8264. Of course, you less what? Initial outlay of 9.6. So what will be our net present value? Our net present value, in this case, uh, of course, we should be having so just drag it down. We have now all this. So I'll be having this value. That should be 4,000 times 0 0.9091. We add uh, 3750 by 0 0.8264. We're going to add 3,800 by 0 0.8264. With less initial outlay of 9,600, which in this case I'm going to get an NPV, positive NPV of 275.72. 275.7.72. Okay? So once you are done with that, let us check. What about if we abandon this project in year one? NPV, one year. 
at the end of one year. What will we be having? Similar concept will apply. We are going to talk about our NPV, which I'll be having 4,000 by 0 0.9091. What would be the abandonment value in year one? The abandonment value in year one, if at all you can check in your question at that point, we are having uh, 6,000. So therefore, in this case, I'll be having a 6,000 times 0 0.9091. Of course, uh, we less what? We less our initial outlay. So that as at the end of the day, what will we be having? As at the end of the day, I'll be having then 4,000 by 0 0.9091. We're going to add 6,000 by 0 0.9091. We less 9,600 which in this case I'm going to get a negative NPV of negative 5 or 9. So, given these three cases, what do you think? What, which year or when is the best time to abandon this project? Just by the look at your computation, what do you think? How can we advise this company? How can we advise the company? The best period to abandon this project should be when? Of course, we can talk of end of year two. If you abandon this project at the end of year two, I'm going to generate a positive NPV of 275.75. So therefore, if I told you to advise the company, they should abandon this project at the end of year two. End of year two. They should abandon this project at the end of year two. So you'll find that uh, abandonment uh, decision is always not uh, very complicated. So long as you understand the concept more so at this level, it will always be very easy. It will always be very easy. So that is what you are required to do in part A of the question. I want us to meet in the next session where we are going to handle part B of this question 5. We are going to handle part B of the question 5. And that, of course, will be our last question in block model paper 1. Then we start block model paper 2. So these are what you are required to do. Remember, the block uh, models paper are literally designed in a way that it covers almost a all areas. It covers uh, all concepts, majority like 90% uh, or 80% of the concepts in our syllabus, including the theory part. So this block model paper is just to give you an overview of how the concepts are always tested in a different, given different scenarios in different topics. So these are what you are doing uh, throughout this revision period. And I know, uh, of course, the concepts that you're handling will be of great help, uh, of course, to you. So that point, guys, uh, thank you so much. We meet in our next class whereby you're going to handle part B of question number five. Thank you. Bye-bye. So the question that I've been asking how to, of course, access uh, block revision in uh, MDRASA platform. Uh, this is how you're supposed to go about it. Uh, let me show you. So Koza on uh, your browser, you just go and uh, do app.mdarasa.com. So you have app.mdarasa.com. Okay. That is a uh, one way that you can go about it. You just go to, of course, directly to sign up. Or alternatively, you can go to uh, www.mdarasaaccounting.com So you go to uh, www.mdarasaaccounting.com So uh, while there, of course, uh, it will give you a whole uh, bit after it has uh, opened. So on the account, you just come and uh, of course, uh, this, uh, this is our website. You just come to enroll today. So it will still take you to the same place. So of course, if at all you are a new sign up, uh, all you need to do is uh, to create an account. By creating an account, you can fill in all these details. Uh, of course, uh, for company and professional title, this is uh, purely optional. For password, make sure that it is a mixture of our special character letters and digits, so that at least to secure your account, then you create your account after agreeing to the terms. So once you have uh, created your account, then you can just sign in. 
you can sign in either using your phone or you can use your email. So in this case, I'm just going to So after you created your account on signing process is uh, very simple and also maneuvering on the platform is very easy. So in this case, uh, I'm a student doing CPA. You can just come in search CPA course because assuming that is what you're doing. So you can come and uh, search a CPA. So once you've searched CPA, you'll come to get started. Then you click uh, start learning. So we have uh, various components. We have coursework, we have revisions, and we have live virtual recorded. So because you are interested with the revision, of course you can go through what we have there, but because you are interested with the revision, come and click revisions, okay? So come and uh, click, uh, of course, revision. Once you've uh, clicked revision, then the revision, part, the revision part will appear so far. Uh, these are the units that are ready. Of course, uh, others will be uploaded uh, with new time. But for now, you can access these uh, revisions. Say, for example, you are doing financial management. Of course, the video that you just seen. So you come and uh, click financial management. In that case, the options are very simple. You just key in your number there. You're going to get an SDK push on your phone. And after you paid automatically, after reloading, you're going to be granted access even without calling us. So that's how easy you can access, of course, MDRASA revision package for December 2024. So go through that. And uh, in the event that, uh, of course, you require any assistance, you can always reach us out on our number 0708-068-851. So that's how you can access our revision. So to that point, Make sure that you start your revision as soon as you can. Bye-bye.